On your journey through life, you are the hero. There are times, however, when it is beneficial to have an advisor to guide you along your path. Welcome to the Smart Money Simplified Podcast with Brent Mikosh, Certified Financial Planner, Certified Investment Management Analyst, and Co-Founder of MP Advisors, LLC. In this podcast, Brent discusses some of the most important and interesting topics of the day as they relate to finance, the economy, and beyond. Now, on to the show. Hello, and welcome to Smart Money Simplified with Brent Mikosh. Brent, how are you? I just got back from Aspen, Colorado, which was pretty wow. good. I saw some people up there that I have not seen for about three years. And you know, due to the pandemic, when you first run mm -hmm. into somebody you haven't seen for a while, you never quite know what you're going to get. And I'm happy to report that this couple is looking better than they did in 2019. So it was <laughs> a fantastic trip. I wasn't sure where that story was going. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I showed up and somebody's missing an arm. And there's a story it, behind that, Brent. No. It, I'll tell you, a lot of stuff has happened in the last few years, for sure. Yeah, you just never know. Well, I do know one thing. You've got Ella May on the show today. I'm so excited. We got a chance to chat just briefly before the show started. But why did you bring Ella on the show today? You know, I think that everything that we're doing, regardless of what business we're in, it's increasingly, although we've got these wonderful technological tools that we use to connect to people, there's really nothing better than really connecting with somebody face to face or That's even doing it virtually like we're doing. But it's those human interactions, I think, are so, that are so important. And Ella is what is known as a super connector. Uh, so she primarily works with people that have been really, really successful in their businesses, but are maybe trying to dive into the social media side of things, mm. the marketing things trying to take their ability in many cases to leverage these personal relationships that they can definitely have one-on-one -on -one and expand that into these virtual worlds where your reach and the scope of the people you can connect with and contact is just so much greater. And so there's a lot of things that Elle does. I'm really excited to have her here today. But that's just kind of a, that's kind of a first taste, I guess, of some of the things that we're going to talk about. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. All right. So Ella, thanks. I have to say you have one of the best names that I think I've ever heard. Ella May. <laughs> Thank you so much. It just kind of, yeah. it, it just sort of rolls off the tongue for sure. So I guess I'll start with this. Give me a little bit of background on yourself. You know, I introduced you as a super connector. How does somebody become a super connector? I mean, so I think, I think the baseline is, is you genuinely have to be interested in people. And this doesn't mean you have to be an extrovert. It just means you're just interested in people. Right. And I think, honestly, I think some of it comes from my childhood where I went to four different or five different high schools in four years, moved around a lot. And I was, con I think naturally, I'm actually quite an introvert, but I was constantly being put in new environments where I was like, okay, I got to figure out this situation socially. I got to figure out this situation socially. And I think that's where the skill set honestly baselined. But one thing that 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 experience of moving around so much taught me was that, hey, I'm going to have to find new friends anyways. Like I didn't really have the option of having those lifelong friends from primary school. I just moved too much. So I was like, I'm going to have to find new friends anyways. Why don't I find really cool friends that I can like learn from and they're doing cool stuff and hopefully I rub off on them and it's a two way street. And so I kind of got into this habit very early on of friending up and I'm really talked about this before, but I got into this habit of friending up. And even when I was a young adult, my early twenties, et cetera, I would always just look for people and kind of be like, oh, I wonder if I could really kind of learn something from them or if I'd be a good influence on them. And just because of life, yeah, I didn't have that ability, that, um, uh, that option to have the friends that, you know, oh, you know, I know Ricky's, uh, you know, he's, in so much debt and I've lent him $10,000. He hasn't paid me back, but I've known him since kindergarten. Like I never had that. Right? Like, yeah. Cause you were moving around, of course. Moving around. And so, yeah, I really kind of had, and I got into personal development fairly early around 18 or so. I remember doing the first, somebody gave me a Tony Robbins CD set, the 30 day personal power. Um, I was about 18 and I remember going through it and that was the first time I set goals. And that really sort of cued my mind to be like, okay, I want to be around people not necessarily of a certain caliber, a certain income. It's not that it's, I want to be around people that are cool and that challenge me and that are doing stuff that I just find interesting. And I think that molded my mind a lot to be like, to look for that in people. Yeah. You know, I've never heard that term before friending up, but I think that that's, um, that's a pretty interesting concept. And it reminds me of my grandfather once said, you know, if you can find some, you know, a lot of people want to pull you down. 
Mm-hmm. But if you can find somebody that wants to pull you up, hang on to them as hard as you can, <laughs> you know. And so, so what did that look like for you? Like, what kind of? Obviously, you're looking for relationships that are that are going to challenge you, that are going to be exciting with people that are doing and achieving great things. Kind of like, I think about this in my own life. I want to be around people that I think are moving the ball forward, and that looks different for everybody. Moving the ball forward might might look radically different for one person than another. But 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 I like the idea of being around energetic people that are trying to create and do something good. Is that, is that kind of what you meant by friending up? Absolutely. It's being around people that are like, look, and and this really rocked my psyche. Like I hired a therapist because of this, because it messed with me so much, but within seven, eight months of being on my own and entrepreneur, my three closest friends at the time were multimillionaires, 15, 20 years in business. And these were the three people I talked to the most often And it really messed with my psyche where I was like, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Like, why haven't I figured this out yet? Like all my, these guys have, and they're my friends and they're, you know, but I think if you're, if you're constantly the person where you're wondering, what am I missing? Why haven't I figured this piece out yet? When you're around your friend crew, I would say that's a pretty good crew to be honest. You know, if you you find yourself, and we'll talk about entrepreneurship and a lot of these things as well, but if you found yourself immediately around people that have been that successful. And what I've found is people that, that have achieved a great deal of success, they generally don't have a lot of time unless they see something in you or they see something in the person that they're willing to mentor or spend that time with. So, so I guess two questions. First, how did you develop these relationships? And secondly, what have you ever heard from them what it was that they saw in you? What was it that they were getting out of it as well? Because all these human, human interactions, they're a two-way street. They're absolutely a two way street. And I think one of the things that's really important when you're when you're building, because essentially these people, they're my friends, but they were also kind of mentors, you know, like you learn things from people. Right. So I think one of the most important things is you need to early on when you're developing these relationships, especially with busy people who have a lot of people vying for their time, you need to make yourself valuable. Because in that interaction right there in the beginning, that person has essentially has more pulls on their time, their attention, everything than you do. Like they're kind of holding the leverage card at the moment. So one thing that I would always do when I met someone who was, you know, killing it, I knew I wanted to like get into their world a little bit is I would just really pay attention to them and pay attention to what they're talking about. Most entrepreneurs, especially higher up entrepreneurs where they've got their stuff really rolling, their business is what makes them money. And that's what 90% of people go at, right? They're like, oh my God, Brent, you've got this cool you know, business going. Let me help you get more leads. Let me help you. Vote. Well, you have that coming all the time, right? But most people that have made it to a certain level, they've got a passion, They've got something that really has their heart. Maybe it's addiction recovery, ending hunger, creating resources for low-income families. It's something that really has their heart because now they've created enough income where they can actually make a little bit of a difference in this area. But the thing is, that little bit of a difference in this area, it's usually self-funded. They usually don't have a ton of time or attention for it. And it's there, it's chilling, it's like a really, but it's not getting what it needs. So if you can figure that out about someone and figure out, okay, well, I get that they're killing it over here in business, but where's, what's got their heart? Like what really has their heart? People will always find energy for that. But now you're getting into the the real emotional stuff that drives people. And in a lot of cases, some people might wear it on their sleeve. Some people might be very upfront about that, but not everybody is initially. So what, what were some of the things that you did and were they just your personality or was it really a conscious intent to both open the doors to people to get them to feel that level of trust and connection with you where they were willing to share what, what they're passionate about? How'd you get there? How'd you get to that point? Absolutely a conscious intent and really good question. Um, so I can give you a, I can give you a very specific example, right? So the first person that I connected with that was the biggest linchpin in opening up my network was Joe Polish. So I was working with a coach who started talking about this guy, Joe Polish, and he was in his mastermind. I never heard of him before. So I dug into Joe's, uh, Joe Polish's podcast, his books, et cetera. And all I would do was like at the time I was living in Canada, Joe lived here in Phoenix. Like we weren't, you know, there was no reason for us to jump on a call. There was no real reason for us to be in contact, right? 
So all I would do is I, when I was listening to Joe's podcast, I would screenshot the podcast, share it to my Instagram story and tag Joe in the story, which then hit to his DMs, right? And say, great episode by at Joe Polish. And sometimes he replied, sometimes he didn't, whatever, you know, but I was just, honestly, it was someone that I was genuinely into their content. I appreciated their presence. So I was like, I don't care about sharing this. I'm just adding value to my audience, right? So did that a couple of times. And we kind of got this like back and forth conversation going over Instagram over a period of like six months, right? And at one point I start hearing Joe say, uh, he said something around addiction recovery. And I was like, huh, that I could just tell that there was like more weight on that. Like he really cared about that. So then I look into his content and I'm like, oh yeah, he's got genius recovery. This is a really big passion of his, but Again, you could tell it was self-funded. It wasn't getting a ton of attention. You know, most of the stuff was going towards what created revenue for the business. So I went on to YouTube and I found a really good interview of Joe interviewing uh, Dr. Gabor Mate, who's like a world-renowned addictions expert. And I just downloaded the video off of YouTube, put it into a $20 a month video editor, cut out about eight segments, captioned them for him, et cetera. And then I pinged him on Instagram and I was like, hey, I just want to, you know, honestly, thanks for what you do in terms of all the content you put out. I've learned a lot from you. I saw this really great interview with you and Dr. Mate, and I noticed the Genius Recovery Instagram account isn't getting a lot of love lately. So here, I just created some videos for you. Give them to the team. Here's the Google Drive folder. Have a great day. And he was like, Oh, he was, so then I sent that off, whatever, did something else. I look at my phone an hour later, I've got eight voice messages from him. He's recording another one. He's this first one is so good. Kid, look, what do you think about this caption? And so I typed me and I'm like, yeah, this is great. Keep it coming. And he was like, look, are you around? Can you just jump on Zoom with me right now? I was like, of course. So it's like 7, 8 PM. We jump on Zoom. We ended up being on that call for almost three hours. And he was like, look, we just have to do something together. Like it's, and again, I think there was an element of, it was a, I didn't rush anything. First of all, like I waited to hear until I really saw stuff. And this wasn't the intent. Like the intent was just, hey, this guy seems cool. He's probably someone I want in my corner 20 years from now, where I don't want to get him as a client tomorrow. I don't want to do a deal with him tomorrow, but he just seems like someone I would want in my corner. And why not start the foundation of building a relationship? And then once I heard something and I saw something that really grabbed where I was like, Ooh, that's, that's a thing for him for sure. I just invested two hours of my time and $20 of my money and put together a little gift for him, you know, no different than you would give someone flowers or something. And yeah. And so I think the biggest thing is like, don't rush anything. You want to see a good person do bad things, rush them. It's horrible. Right. So don't rush anything look for where, look for what has people's hearts and then see where you can genuinely add value around that, where you can give them. And it has to be a straight gift. Like don't give them a workout plan. (laughs) Don't give them something that's going to create more work. It creates more work for them. (laughs) Exactly. Give them a straight gift. And I find like videos have always done well because most people are active on social media platforms. Everyone loves having something good to post of themselves. Right. So that's always been an easy one. If that's available, it could be you go through a program and you're like, oh, I could extract like a really cool like workbook PDF for this person from this. And you just create a quick workbook PDF that things can be filled in and shoot it over to them and say, thanks for creating that. It was amazing. I actually created this workbook. You feel free to add it to your program. And when you show people, I think when you show people initially just initiative and that sort of, you know, just just that kind of like, Hey, I'm, I'm here and I'm willing to add value and I'm not just going to suck from you. Like 99% of people in your, you don't, that you don't know that are in your orbit are doing. And so, yeah, I think there's the element of being proactive, making yourself valuable. Also just being careful with like, I never ping Joe, like Joe's become a good friend. I'm actually meeting up with him in Vegas this weekend. We're doing, um, with a group of people, we're going to a movie premiere and then a benefit event Saturday night. And I, you know, I have his phone number now we're buds, but I never ping him with anything I can Google. Like I don't, you know, I'll never take their time with something rudimentary with something I can look up myself. It's always stuff where I'm like, Hey, I would love your brain on this. If you've got 10 minutes. And I keep it to a true 10 minutes and say, hey, by the way, I know you got lots going on. You cool to keep going? 
or, and being really respectful that way. So I think there is an element to like, yeah, you have to add value and you probably initially don't have the life or business experience or the network to just add value just by showing up initially. So you've got to put in the effort a little bit to make sure that you're showing up in a way where this person likes having you around. So when you did that, w w had you already launched your business in terms of doing the social media consulting and, and really helping people and entrepreneurs and successful business people in that space? You were in that already. I was, I had a version of that offer in that already. I was primarily helping people specifically with Instagram. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was already in and around that space already. And it was actually doing some work with Joe, with Genius Recovery and, you know, some other big clients that really kind of propelled me, you know, you want to see someone change, change their environment, get going comfortable, they'll shift real quick. And so I was right. like, oh, I think I could tweak this offer and make it a little bit more specific. So these are I like, I love working with people where I get so much from just interacting with them. And then I can add value too. And this is great. And so, yeah. So what do you think, you know, when I think about people building like deep and personal authentic relationships in one case or in one way, we've got a in incredible way to do that and ability to do that through social media, because you're able to get at least a peek behind the mirror, if you will, of what's going on in people's lives. But in another way, it's a colossal time waster and a lot of it's completely not authentic, I guess is maybe the best way to put it. How do you, how do you take what is really a powerful medium and, and kind of crack the code with it in terms of taking away, because I think a lot of people would agree it's mostly noise, 95% of it, at least, you know, my view is, is sort of a waste of time. What's, what do you need to do to maximize that and leverage it to its true potential where it's not just yelling at each other through computer screens? I don't know if that question makes sense, but. Absolutely. Look, I'm a drug dealer, but I don't get high on my own supply. Okay. <laughs> so here's like, don't spend, you don't need to spend a ton of time consuming like 30, 45 minutes a day of consumption where you're searching with specific hashtags. I mean, if you want to just scroll on there and zone out, go for it, right? But I'm talking if you want to use it in this way, then look up specific hashtags of people who would be in your ideal client market. Look through those videos, see who's around, see what they're doing, see what they're talking about. And then let's say, for example, you came across Brent's podcast and you're like, oh, Brent's someone I would love to connect with. He's got some great stuff going on. You could screenshot this podcast right now, put it on your Instagram story, put it on your Facebook feed, put it on anywhere you can tag someone else and tag him. And, and when you tag him in it, Brent's going to get a DM that says, you know, John Smith mentioned you in his story. And mo you may not say anything, but you see a couple of those, you'll kind of be like, thanks, man. Like this guy's just giving you free exposure, right? And that's really valuable when you're getting exposed to his warm audience completely for free. People pay for that. So that's just nice. It's like, oh, thanks, dude. Like, love that you you like the show. And you might open up, you're going to be really receptive to just a chill back and forth dialogue coming up, right? Like, hey, I, I checked out your profile. It looks like you're in, you know, you're in school for accounting right now. Is there anything you would want to hear in terms of finance stuff, in terms of business building stuff? Anything got your eye? Maybe we'll get his feedback. That's kind of your target market, right? And that's where you can open up this con and it's really, really valuable to have that, you know, DMs are a very comfortable place for people. Whereas like Joe and I had this six month interaction over DM, right? If I would have been like after four or five messages would have been like, Joe, it's so great talking to you. I really think we should move this to the next level please head to this about me section, Right. book right. your call and enter your info. Well, now this is getting, now he has to come onto my turf. He's sort of like, what, you know, what? So you have to make it a really comfortable playground for both people and actively search out people that you want to connect with. These could be potential clients, could just be people that you want in your corner, kind of like me in the beginning, right? And, and then use social media, use the stories function, use the functions to share other people's, to give other people free publicity. Yeah. And you can even do videos and say like, hey, I learned this really great thing from whoever. And I just wanted to share it to my audience. And you tag that person in the video. That's just, a, that just feels good to someone. 
Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you, for me anyway, I, I don't, I'm not on Facebook at all. I'm not on Instagram. I love LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn mm -hmm. is, an, is an incredibly powerful tool. But what always kind of amazes me with LinkedIn, and, and I generally like it more because it's a lot more positive. It's people, again, they're trying to move the ball forward. They're trying to grow their businesses. They're doing things. They're doing something constructive. But you get that feeling when you first connect with somebody, and the very first thing is, here's my product and service. You know, and, and there's not that there's not that time to to learn exactly what might be important to the person that you're first reaching out with. I mean, what kind? You, you've given already a lot of great advice, but to an existing business or a young entrepreneur that is using some of these platforms to connect with people, what are a couple things you just don't do if you you shoot that DM for the first time? Don't yeah, don't kick off with your offer, right? And and even and I would say too, if it's someone. Like, I think when you're first kicking off as an entrepreneur, it's hopefully you've got some kind of a financial runway or a low ticket offer, whatever, something where money is coming in consistently. When you're first kicking off an entrepreneur, usually money's tight. And so if you've got that baseline, your bills are paid, then you can chill a little bit and really just focus on relationship building because that's where the de that's where the big deals come from. That's where like nobody's Googling for like, who do I bring in on my hundred million dollar real estate deal? Like that, right. that happens within networking, right? So then you can just chill and focus on relationship building and whether like there's it, cash isn't the only way you get paid. You can get paid in confidence and skill set. There's six ways to get paid. I believe it's um, Jay Abraham, I believe talks a lot about this. I don't know all six off the top of my head, but I would say don't kick off with your offer don't kick off like when you kick off with being interested in the other person or giving the other person value like me screenshotting and sharing this podcast and tagging you would be a version of giving you value because i'm exposing you to my audience for free and i'm kind of giving you a compliment i listen to the show etc right so give the other person a form of value or just start off with being interested in them or interested in something they posted or whatever and make it clear that you're not trying to trap them. Like, this is the worst. Yes, questions tend to be really, really bad for this. Hey, Brent, do you enjoy drinking clean filtered water? <laughs> yeah. Of course. But are you <laughs> trying to sell me, right? Exactly. Right. So don't, don't worry about letting the conversation end. You can pick it up another time with something else interesting you found. Like, just chill on that. That's not how real relationships are made. Yeah. And, and, and really, again, I think the, the key thing is like this really this works when you want a real relationship, like you want someone you can call when you're in the middle of a launch and your page goes down and you're like, oh, my God, like we're live and like crap. And that's what you'll get is like real people. Now, at what point do you think these these virtual relationships that you're building, at what point does that then spill over into the real world? where obviously you mentioned Joe and Joe's a good friend of yours right now. Is it, is, is that, I guess it depends on the business you're in, whether that's an end goal or not, but uh, how does that process kind of work? I mean, you know, one of the easiest ways is if there's a natural fit, you kind of transition from chatting on social media to some sort of a video call, right? right. That'll generally be the first way. So that way you're on a video. Okay, so now you're more familiar. You've seen each other, you know, face to face over video, all of that. And then, yeah, I mean, the more you can organize to so like, hey, if they're going to be at an event, see if you can go or there's other people. If they're like, this is something it's interesting you bring this up because this is something actually they teach pickup artists, like guys who are trying to pick up girls. Okay. Is they'll say, if you're on a date with a girl and you want her to feel, feel more comfortable with you, take her to multiple places throughout the night. So in that three or four hours, you'll hit two, three bar wherever you're going. And subconsciously, it makes us feel like we know the person better, right? It makes us feel more comfortable with the person. So same thing with this. If you can, okay, so you've chatted on social media, then you've chatted on video, then you ran into each other at this party. Then you, the more places yeah. somebody sees you, the better they feel like they know you, the more environments they've seen you in. So if you can have multiple, and this is it, same thing with online. So if I Google Brent and I look at his website and I'm like, oh, he's got a podcast. Cool. And I go to his podcast and oh, he's got a YouTube channel too. Cool. So I go to his YouTube channel. I feel like I know him better from the omnipresence that I'm around. And this is where social media, just like 
you know, a little side note can be what I found with the people that I've worked with helping them with their social is it's really hard to track a direct ROI from organic. So it's really difficult. But like month three, once things have been going up consistently and we've got all the platforms rocking, all of a sudden the P part of the PL is like 12% up. And it's like, right. we're not really sure where that came from. And then we look at some of it came from the website, but it's somebody might have seen or binge listened to the podcast or seen 17 videos and then headed to the website. That omnipresence is really, really powerful. And so, yeah, so the more that you can come when it comes to making the connection specifically, appropriately move things forward comfortably. Do not push it. Again, rushing never goes well. So comfortably move things forward. Hey, it makes sense for us to jump on a video call. Hey, why don't I come down to the office? Why don't I, like, whatever, right? Then the more, the, the, the easier that relationship will develop. You know, I think social media too, particularly if you're starting a new business, enormous leverage. Mm. However, a question I would have for you is this. Let's say you've got a really successful entrenched business. Almost doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's so much that can sometimes go sideways with social media where because of the viral essence of it, maybe that would make some people sort of back off of it a little bit and say, you know what, we're doing just fine. We don't need this. We don't need these platforms at all. A, is there ever a case where you think that's true? Mm -hmm. and, and secondly, what do you, what are some things that people need to think about to, to control that, to control something really dumb happening, for lack of a better term, online? Yeah, really good point. So it, I've got a friend of mine who primarily works with like supplement offers. So he kind of puts together the offer, works with, works with the manufacturer, et cetera, right? And we were talking about putting together a couple social media accounts for two of his companies, right? So we're doing some digging into the companies and we're looking and I was like, hey, have you always, because with COVID and whatnot, manufacturers were having issues, things were coming late, you know, supply chain, all this stuff. And I said, hey, have you guys like caught, have you had the chance to really catch up from COVID? Like everything's back. He's like, well, it's not back to normal speeds, no. And I was like, all right, when people complain, where are they complaining? Well, right now they're going to an email. Let me just, let's just have a look at that. And they resolve all their complaints, obviously, but it could just be anybody who's like, why is my order two days late, whatever. And so we were looking at it and I was like, I honestly wouldn't set up social media. Like whenever anything goes wrong, this is going to be the first place they go. The account's going to get, you know, it's not going to be a fun place for the account. And it's just going to cause a lot. You're just going to have to have manpower and they're really managing this and that it just doesn't make sense. Like they're providing a great product, a great service, but because of the nature, low ticket mass market and people with stuff, you know, that kind of stuff can be like, oh, you know, it made my, you know, my tooth hurt and I don't like it and all this. And you don't want them the first stop to be social media, which is a public presence. So yeah, I think you want to look at your offer, look at what you're doing and if it makes sense to invest time there as a medium for you. So that's the first part of the question. What was the second part of the question? Second part of the question is, do you, you kind of answered my question there, is it, do you think that these platforms are really, they're necessary today moving forward in, in nearly every business? Or is it some, because I, you know, I kind of go back and forth with that a little bit. Again, I, I again, heavy LinkedIn user, I love LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, the other ones, I don't know that, for, I know for me personally, I could care less about Facebook, but I don't know if it matters for my business. And, and it's always a question of trying, you know, what, what's the balance there? What's the, what's the risk versus reward of engaging in some of these other platforms? I mean, I would, yeah, I think there are people for sure where it benefits them more to stay private than to be public. Absolutely. And you know that if you're one of those people, right? But I would say for the majority, like, for example, you're already posting on LinkedIn, right? So you're probably already doing articles, maybe some videos, et cetera. So there's no reason for you personally why your team couldn't take that content uh, when it comes to the all the written stuff, repost that to Facebook, take right. the videos, clip them up a little bit, make them into Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels, TikTok, because it's kind of like, hey, why don't we give this a go? And let's, it's like everything, you've got to test it, right? Yeah. Let's give this a go and see like maybe 
It's like the fastest growing demographic on TikTok right now, 45 to 55 year old women. Are you serious? Serious. <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah. Serious, right? That's a lot of people's target market. Yeah. Like women make a lot of the purchasing decisions. So, hey, maybe there's something for us on TikTok. Maybe there's something. And again, how you'll know when it comes to organic social, it, you obviously you can see views on your video and stuff, but it is difficult to track. But how you'll know if it's actually working is three, four months from now, you're like, huh, we're like 10, 15% up on the P part of our P&L. That's interesting. Right. Where'd that come from? Right. Or like we've had X, you're looking through numbers. We've had X amount more leads come in or X amount more sales calls. They're like, holy crap, this has been interesting. And it's just the omnipresence of people seeing you in multiple places. And yeah. also that, you know, we all have cookies on our computer, right? So if, for example, let's say I, I, I probably spend the majority of my social media time on TikTok and Clubhouse. Those are like my two platforms and I'm just consuming the most right now. So let's say I come across your video on talk on um, on TikTok and I'm like, oh, who's Brent? He seems cool. So I click on your video and it takes me to I click on your link and it takes me to your website. Well, that planted cookies in my phone or in my browser. So I'm now more likely to see your LinkedIn posts. I'm more likely to see your Facebook posts, to see your ads, to see whatever you have going out there. And that's sort of the power of it is you get that YouTube, especially YouTube shorts if you're just doing short videos or longer ones are great too. But because YouTube is owned by Google, it's the second largest search engine in the world. So as you're posting YouTube and you're doing your notes in a way where you're just putting in words that you would want to be found for, even more of a chance, because we have 90, I think it was 90 million people are Googling something every minute. Like it's insane, the amount of traffic that's going through there. So then I, oh, I come across, I click on you because one of your videos popped up. I click on the video. Now I'm more likely to see all this. Now I have a question for you. So you're, you're in this business. So you're in all these platforms every single day. Do you do a um, virtual detox in your own personal life? Is, are there days or times where you turn all this stuff off and say, you know what? Today I'm not, I'm not clicking into any of these things. Or are you just in it? You know what's so funny is I don't spend a ton of time. Okay. And so, like I look at metrics and I look at clients' metrics and we look at like I'll study their accounts, but that's not like mindless consuming, yeah. right? Is like I don't like I kind of realized three years ago when I kicked off with this, hey, this could get really, really out of hand. So I have no notifications on on my phone. My phone's basically always on do not disturb. Yeah. Um, because I want to be in charge of it. It's not in charge of me, right? I don't get Instagram pings. I don't get I don't get any pings except for like eight people's text messages. And if somebody calls me twice, that'll so come you, up. So you so you're tr you're truly um you're a technician when it comes to this as opposed to being a consumer. I'll kind of see some if I'm yeah. whatever, if I kind of get into it or I'm out by my pool and hey, what's going on? I'll kind of look at funny because you'll get good inspiration that way sometimes, but I tap out of it pretty quick. Yeah. And I think that's just you. It's it's like anything. You're just kind of training yourself. We're like, no, nope, we're not going to do this behavior for two hours today. We're going to do something else. Yeah. Kind of final thing I want to dive in here. Uh, do you think this concept of the metaverse, is this going to be the next step moving forward? And if so, what do you think the timeline is? And what does this look like five or 10 years from now? Oh my gosh. I wish I could answer that question. <laughs> um, I think, I think VR is really, really cool. I've got, uh, actually, I've got friends who are uh, buying multiple properties, even towns and whatnot, and to set up VR stuff. It, I think it's really interesting. I, to be honest, I'm not sure. It's yeah. still, it's still early. It's early to see where, even with web three and all of those developments, I think VR, AR is here to say, and I think universities are being really, the universities that are jumping on this and creating virtual learning environments are being really smart um, because it's just another option. I think VR, AR is here to stay. And I think that it's just going to be really interesting how that translates over. And I think right now there is so much, there's so much at shift in the world right now, interest rates are rising. We've got stuff with Ukraine and like, there's a lot happening. And so I think the outcome of something like that is gonna be determined by a fair amount of climate factors, not just what's the technology 
going to be valuable to be used as, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I wonder about that though, because I, I wonder when you see when you see adoption, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens, and all of a sudden, wham, and it, it explodes like a supernova. And the VR su stuff, I think, the augmented reality, I think, depending on what kind of business you're in, can be incredibly uh, exciting and probably very useful. I think VR, again, depending on what kind of business, could also be incredibly useful. Um, I think a concern that I have is somebody that has young kids that has zero intention of letting either of them get their hand on one of these little devices until they're well into their teenage years. That's going to be quite a fight when, when I get deeper into that one. But um, this notion of humanity continually sort of diving into this virtual world concerns me. Yeah. But I, I'm hoping that we get, because I look at, you know, I look at this phone that I'm holding right now in my hand. It is incredibly liberating for me from a business standpoint. I can reach out. I can talk to people almost anywhere on the planet at almost any time. You're instantly accessible. In many cases, they want to be there instantly accessible. The flip side is, is that you're instantly accessible. <laughs> you can be talked to at any, at any given point around the planet. And these things, I think, are incredibly incredible devices, but also I think it's caused kind of a little bit of a psychic, psychological sort of weirdness in society for the last decade or so. And and my concern is, you know, we go into this VR world, what that's going to look like and what happens to humanity, because I still think at the bottom of it, you know, we're social creatures. And to get together and, and have conversations like this is fantastic. And I absolutely love the fact that we can do this. Yeah, thank God we had Zoom through the pandemic. It allowed us to stay totally connected with our with our client base. But then where's that line between then really sitting down across from somebody, which at least in my world, we've been fortunate to be doing now for the last, you know, about a year or so where we're getting in front of people like I started the start our conversation with that you haven't seen for a while. And you just it's so much more real. It's so much more impactful. It's so much more to me anyway, um, nourishing, I guess. And uh, and I think it, we still haven't cracked that code yet in terms of what's the what's the right balance between those two. Well, I think we've cracked the code a little bit on what's the wrong balance like yeah, that's true like, yeah you know like we've seen it over this past with this past generation that was really just raised with phones and i i i miss that uh where i i think i had my first cell phone in grade seven or so and it was like the nokia snake like not anywhere near what we have now, right? Yeah, I was out of college when I had mine. It was like the brick, yeah. you know? So I wasn't like, you know, a two-year-old like going for the iPad, right? Um, which like, of course, you can't help it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, of course, they're around. Of course, they're going. These things are shiny and bright and all this stuff. So I think, yeah, we've seen it with this generation where like suicides have gone way up, especially in teenage girls. I think it's incredibly important to, and I have so much... I'm not a parent, so I'm not going to speak to this like I know anything. Mm -hmm. I have so much empathy, not only for kids nowadays who are being raised with social media, and that's a really big added pressure when you get to junior high and high school, but for parents who have to now have an eye on this. It's a lot right. of work. Like, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. And again, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic that uh, I think I, I still believe I think the benefits of this connectivity are will far outweigh what the negatives are. You know, in the past, it was the people that had the information, had the power. Now the information is everywhere. It really is. Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bad information out there, too. But you can you can get to what you need. It's a question now. How do you how do you use it, interpret it? How do you leverage it? And I think, you know, I, I guess I'll end with this in terms of where we started is how do you use it to build you know, deeper, more meaningful connections. And, and I think he, he certainly gave me some great advice on how to do that. So I really thank you for, for carving some time out of your day and, and uh, talking to me about this. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So people want to reach you. I am, let's say I am a business owner and, uh, and I'm looking at this, at this world, both either virtual or even in person. I, I say, you know what, I need to enhance the value of the connections I have with my clients, also with, with potential new clients. How do they reach you? How, how would they find you? Um, probably the easiest way is, uh, just shoot me I, like, I'll give you an email address you can put in the show notes. It's hello at lajmay.com. That's probably the easiest way actually. Or if you're around on social media, you can shoot me a message on LinkedIn, Instagram. I mean, I check all my messages, uh, Facebook. I think you have all the links for those. Mm -hmm. So feel free to shoot me a message on social or send me an email directly. If there's something you really want to make sure that we jam on. And who's like the ideal client you'd want to work with? Ideally, it would be somebody who has been quite successful. And so you've got an offer going, you've got a company running, things are going well. 
Um, you've maybe been showing up on social media, but it hasn't been consistent and you hate social media. You don't even want to look at your phone. You want to have, but you know, the benefits of like, Hey, you could be getting better book deals. You could be getting booked for more speaking gigs. You could be getting more leads if you had that presence. So if you want to be able to have that presence, but not really have to manage it at all, I got you. And now would also that include, cause you got to have some content you got to have stuff that you can share that people, that people care about. Would, would you guys, do you guys do that as well? We take care of that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, fantastic. And uh, I know you're, you're also here in Phoenix. So uh, we, only I know. Got, we only got a couple months left of this heat and then we're done with it. But, um, but it's, it's great. Uh, I've, I've met you before, but it's great to, to be able to, to have this conversation today. So thank you so much for, for joining me. Thank you for having me. Ella, this has been fantastic. I, right off the bat, you, I mean, this was just so important to me, friending up. I love that. That's why I'm with Brent. I'll be honest with you. uh, Brent, I am friending up with Brent (laughs) because this guy (laughs) brings on amazing guests. I get to meet people all the time uh, with what he does, and and I'm learning. Uh, He he has been a mentor to me, so I I appreciate that. And the fact that you planted the seed for TikTok because I've been waiting to see this guy dance for so long. (laughs) So (laughs) I will not be on that. I will not be on that. It's not like that anymore, though. Like, it's not. TikTok's changed. (laughs) Okay, all right. I'll trust you on that. I'll trust you for sure. Uh, Ella, again, thank you so much for being on the show. Brent, thank you for, uh, you know, facilitating this. I I also want to just ask you to just give your contact information again. I know that this show was really about Ella and what she does. However, one thing that it just brought me right back to is I'm, I'm being very honest when I say that I'm friending up with you. And I think that there's a lot of people that are looking for someone, a professional that they can speak with about what their situation is and you make it so easy. So can you just give somebody, you know, some contact information for you? Sure. I mean, our phone number here at the office is 602-255-0555 and myself or Andy or Kayla will answer the phone and be happy to set up a time for us to talk or email me brent.mikosh at raymondjames.com and also i'm pretty active on linkedin i put a lot of stuff on linkedin yeah, so yeah, we've got video blogs we've got these podcasts we've got a lot of different things that are heading up there and as soon as compliance approves it we'll, we'll be on spotify and youtube but we're still waiting on that all right fingers crossed on that again brent thank you so much and of course our last thank you always goes to the listening audience again thank you so much for listening today to the Smart Money Simplified podcast with Brent Mikosh. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way when Brent comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. And we humbly ask that you share this podcast, rate it, and leave a review as this actually does help other people find the show. Again, thanks for listening today. For everyone at MP Advisors, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of Smart Money Simplified Podcast. Have any questions about topics covered during the show? Visit www.smartmoneysimplified.com or give us a call at 602-255-0555. Don't forget to click the follow button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the hosts and or guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Raymond James Financial Services Incorporated. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional financial advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service providers with any questions you may have regarding your individual situation. Securities are offered through Raymond James Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA, and SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Raymond James Financial Services Advisors Incorporated, MP Advisors, LLC, is not a broker slash dealer and is independent of Raymond James Financial Services.